Yeah, baby. I made him bite using the life scope. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel. I'm James and this is Clearwater Fishing. Today we're doing a little walleye fishing using the uh, the old slab spoon. Real simple technique. I'm going to show it to you guys today. Show you my gear and uh, show you one of the easiest methods to catch a walleye, at least here in the Texas Panhandle. All right, so like I said, I'm going to do a slab spoon. This is a three ounce, three, well, three ounce, wow, three eighths of an ounce cotton cordell slab spoon. This is the silver color. They also have a golden color, maybe a one with a feather on it. I just like the standard silver color. I believe I have 12 pound copolymer on here to yellow braid. I believe it's 20 pound braid. Shakespeare rod, that's an ugly stick pro. Uh, it is a medium action. It says medium action rod, it's probably medium in both action and power. So it's real sensitive. I'll be able to fill a lot of things with it. The reel I have, I think it's just a cheap H2O Express 5 to 1 gear ratio reel. Just a simple reel. We're not doing a whole lot of casting per se, but we are doing what I call vertical jigging. And we'll see what the temperature is here in a second. I'm going to change some settings on my live scope. It is definitely set up to a different lake. So I scanned over over these rocks here, not not to the left here, but to the right. There's a point, um, and then there's also a flat of rocks that I saw. We're gonna be pretty simple. We're not gonna cast too far out. I don't know what is that, 15 feet? Let it go all the way to the bottom. Reel up some slack, and then we're going to make the line tight to where we can lift and then drop our jig. Slab spoon. I'm, I'm calling it a jig, but it's a slab spoon. Up, and then down. And depending on the day, if the fish wants something real active, you're going you're gonna to want to pull it up fast and then real high. If it's the water's starting to get much cooler, still don't have an exact temp, it's still adjusting here. I'll have a better idea once it adjusts. I hadn't been out on the water in a little bit, at least on this lake. It's a simple lift and a simple drop. Simple lift and a simple drop. The key is, is not to let your line go slack because uh, a lot of times they will hit it on the fall, these walleye will. And uh, then you'll be missing some bites. So you don't want to be doing that. And that's what I'm going to be doing for the next little bit. I found plenty of structure, rocks. I saw some bait fish. So this guy is really just going to be mimicking a dying shad. Because uh, since the temperature has been dropping here lately, it's not... That uncommon for a walleye to see a dying shad. Now this technique doesn't necessarily need to be done with live scope or anything. I'm just using the the live scope as a bonus. Once you identify an area that is populated with fish, it's an excellent place to, to try this technique. I'm just be cruising around on the old trolling motor and see uh so if we can get anything to, to come on and have some have some fun with us. So I cast it out a little bit. So, and I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to bring it up and just drop it right back down. Bring it up. Drop it right back down. So it just really looks like a dying bait fish on the bottom. Now doing this around hard structures such as wood that kind of thing it's probably not the best idea but it does have a pretty high percentage of catching fish around structure like that 
but uh, these things are pretty cheap so you should be able to afford a few extras but uh, do plan on losing a few if you do fish it around wood structure and then it's on the bottom a water temp is still trying to figure out what it's doing but right now it's sitting at 49 it should realistically probably be in the lower 40s but this lake is a little different than the other one I fish there is a rule I like to follow and uh, if you don't get your net out before making your first cast and you forget to do that you leave the net wherever it is until you catch a fish or get a fish on otherwise you get it out now it's just gonna be bad luck pretty simple and easy technique to do you got a kid or something want to catch some walleye this technique does pretty well typically year-round but I really don't do this technique for walleye until it starts to get cold mainly because it does act like a dying bait fish all right guys so uh first spot didn't pan out so well made about i don't know 30 40 casts didn't uh put any fish in the boat not seeing the activity that i want to see so we're gonna try a new location and see if that produces any fish Got him. I got him. I got the wall out. Yeah, baby. I made him bite using the life scope. Yeah. I know you went from being down deep to being up here, buddy. I don't know, maybe a 14 inch or maybe. I'll check real quick. He's got some meat on him. Oh, he's 14 and a half. Uh, maybe four, 14 and three quarter. But we'll let him go. That was a pretty tough bite. I finally made somebody trigger. What I ended up having to do is come into some, some deeper brush and thicker brush so both deeper and thicker let's see if i can get another bite real quick so this brush is 26 foot of water and honestly this brush is about nine or foot tall i got an oh Hit another one. Had another one bite at least. Man, it's been tough on me today. I fished several spots that typically are pretty good. But today I just had to search for a couple extra spots. I was determined to spend some time to learn, maybe find a new area and I I'm not too far from where I typically fish though, which is kind of nice. Got him. Got another one. Get on up here, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Oh, oh, chill yourself. It'll be all right. That one's out. Hey. This one's smaller than the other one. He's got something weird going on with his back there. Maybe he has attacked from being little or something, but otherwise pretty healthy. We'll let him go. Boom, he's gone. All right, kind of found the, the honey hole here, so we're gonna stick around and catch a few more walleye. 
The slab spoon is a good technique, deep fishing like this. I am fishing, I'm gonna show you guys real quick, some pretty pretty deep brush here. Uh, you can see a fish right there. So let's, uh, let's give it a couple little dangles here. They're just hanging out on the brush. And I found this hole where I'm not getting too tangled and I'm on spot lock and that guy's looking at it. I don't know if I let him look at it too long or what. But there's a hole right here that I'm caught two walleye out of. I've been able to keep both of those, but you gotta be 15 after, after keeping two under. We're gonna stick around in this honey hole for a second. I've had two fish out of it and uh, I think two bites actually, two two legit bites, maybe one and one extra bite that I think might have been a brush pile. I think they like the slow rise and the slow fall. Got him that time. Got him that time. I'm on up here, buddy. Dang. Best of the day. We're going to put you on camera. All right, guys. So we've caught our final fish of the day. Called this walleye just a second ago. I'll probably see it. Not a huge guy. Pretty good eater if you were uh, hungry and going to take him home to eat. But the slab spoon is a pretty effective way to find and locate these walleye. It took me a little bit to find them today. They weren't as shallow as I thought they were going to be. They were actually quite a bit deeper uh, in the 25 to 30 foot range. I'm going to let him go real quick. Well, it was a kind of a tough day. I spent way too much time in the shallows looking for these walleye. And I mean shallows, I mean 20 foot to 10 foot. I should have been spending more time in deeper brush, 25 to 30 feet deep. I really located these fish using my Lawrence unit, using the down imaging and fish reveal. And I saw a lot of walleye or fish in some of this deeper brush that's about 10 foot tall and about 30 foot of water. So that's where I was catching these fish at the end of my day. Uh, as you can tell, the sun is starting to go down. So learn from my mistakes. Don't spend so much time in an area if you're not getting those bites and don't have the confidence that you're gonna catch fish there. But like always, until next time, get out there and go catch some fish.